Hello and welcome to World Daily for today, the 26th of July 2013, and today's news is going to be more of a sort of discussion thing because, well, that's just what the news requires today. So, the earnings call and all that stuff has came out, and what we know is that Activision Blizzard is now going to be an independent company, and that WoW has dipped down to 7.7 .7 million subscribers, which is a loss of 600,000. So, the first thing we want to talk about is this dip in subscribers. They have went from 8.3 million last quarter, which that 8.3 million was a drop of like 1.1 million. It was something real big. So they have actually slowed the tide now. And um, we've only lost 600k. And well, 600k is a lot of people and 7.7 .7 million still puts it as being the biggest subscription MMO. Now there's things we have to realize. First of all, the game is declining in a lot of like Eastern markets and stuff, especially China. And I think a lot of people don't understand China is big. China is really big. There are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people in China. And a lot of those people used to play WoW. But now in, in that area, the free-to-play is rising. Um, the Chinese government, they um, had a lot of restrictions in foreign games and stuff, and Blizzard was one of the ones that got in. But now, there's a lot of Chinese-developed free-to-play free games that are really just made to appeal to the psyche of that market, which is quite different from the Western gamer. And this isn't some sort of weird racism thing, it's just the way that, like, games from the East, they often need to be localized for a Western market, as we see with stuff like Nexon and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's declining in China for sure. Also, there were some issues, like in Brazil, it didn't really take off as well as they thought with a new localized version, and there's a few other things around the world. As for the core, like, Western audience, uh, they haven't, we don't know any specifics at the minute. And from what I see though, like, the game is progressing well in terms of development, and I think this next expansion is really, it's, it's really a time when Blizzard need to throw everything, um, at a, at a, than th that they have, because now the Titan, they don't really have the safety of knowing that Titan's gonna come out and probably blow everyone's socks off. Now Titan, I don't think it was ever going to be as successful as well was initially because, well, the MMO is now a thing, a lot more than it was when WoW launched, and it won't be like that for Titan. But at least they did have something coming down the line. Now the Titan's probably going to take another, I'd say, two to three years to come out. I'd say it could be coming out maybe 2016. We'll probably start hearing about it in, f I'd say, 15, perhaps? Anyway, something like that. But Titan's not coming out as soon as it used to be, so Blizzard have to get their ass in gear, and they need WoW to um, to last a little bit longer. Now, it's still probably an ins it's undeniably still an insanely profitable game, and the more monetization that they push at it, the more that will continue, and while I think a lot of that monetization at the minute is acceptable, as long as they just keep it out of in-game benefits and stuff like that, then I'm cool with it. So, yeah, subscription numbers. I'd just say to everyone here, don't jump on any bandwagon saying either, you know, woe is dead, or don't jump on the opposite bandwagon saying, you know, I don't know, being a dick to the people who say it's dead. Just take the, the middle road, think about stuff yourself, and think that, really, this is not ginormously terrible news, it's pretty much what we expect, and it's exactly what they forecast. And um, in the last earnings report, they did say that subscribers would be falling. Now, there's a lot of key things in the next expansion that I think could be successful. Now, first of all, my personal theory, and a theory that seems to be quite popular on the internet, and is backed up by a lot of in-game events and lore, especially what Rathian has said, is that the next expansion will be, um, will be set in space. It'll probably be set in Argus or somewhere like that. Now, this is really going to appeal to an audience which has been alienated recently, which is the, re the people who loved the Burning Crusade. And I think a lot of people also don't really get that. Burning Crusade was not just raiding. In fact, there was raiding was not as accessible back then than it was in Wrath and stuff like that. And personally, Wrath is my favorite raiding expansion. That said, I only played ICC and Ulduar, so my opinions are probably a little bit colored because the other two tiers were a bit meh. But anyway, now, uh, yes, Burning Crusade had a lot more than just raiding. And I know a lot of people reminisce about, oh, Black Temple, blah, blah, blah. And while they were great instances, I think there's a lot more just nostalgia and stuff in Outland. And I, I go through that zone, and I, I, it's weird. I kind of feel this weird emotional response to like places like Nagrand. Um, yeah, nostalgia. So anyway, I think it'll really appeal to a lot of the BC audience, and that is a sort of audience that was a good few years ago. They maybe gave up the game in Wrath, or, cat well, Cataclysm. They probably definitely gave up the damn game after that mess. Um, so they're going to see, oh, WoW has got a new expansion. They're... You know, they're really doubling down onto WoW now that Titan's not coming out. 
uh, soon. So a lot of these people will probably be enticed back into the game. Now that's one thing. Another thing is I think there'll be a significant graphical update. Now this is not just an update in terms of, oh, we now have new filters and shit. I mean basics. You know, the things that are eight years old, like the player models, stuff like that, I think that'll have a significant update. Because at the end of the day, what was really a hard sell to the um, the modern, not the modern gamer, like somebody who's like 16, 15, you know, okay, you're, you're, you're a teenager. They're not kids, but they're teenagers. And when they are not used to, um, just by virtue of when they've grown up, they're not really used to low quality graphic games. So when they see Warcraft, they think, ugh, that's, that's a bit ugly looking. And, um... Yeah, so I think it's probably going to maybe wide a bit more of the audience and probably let more people be interested in the game by having more high quality like art assets and stuff. Uh, in terms of style though, I think Warcraft is still nearly timeless, so I think that's good. And just in terms of other things, they just need to start really nailing down the features. I think that the 5.4 changes will really reflect fantastically on the next expansion, where they will, where they'll have had 5.4 to experiment with flex rating and uh, Proving Grounds and all those systems that are designed to increase player retention and keep people in the game and keep them doing content that's tailored to them that they enjoy. A lot of the people saying, you know, back in my day it was either normal, heroic, or maybe back in my day it was normal and we were happy with it. Well, you know what, fuck you, because you don't have enough empathy to realize that normal is not, you know, it's not the one difficult level for everyone. Like, I've been raiding normals and a little bit of heroics all the time I've played WoW, pretty much. And I think flex is one of the best things to come to the game, because I'm not being forced to do it to be optimal. Um, when you look at the item level differences, yet for people who are in a, like a casual friends and family guild, then they get to raid, they get to do more things that keep them in the game, and that'll be good for retention, and we'll probably start to slow down this subscription drop. I think overall in the trend, though, we're still going to decrease. I'd say WoW could probably stable out around 5.5 million, maybe 5 million, and actually just stay stable there until Titan comes out, if Blizzard play their cards right. Maybe if they play the cards really right, WoW could grow. I wouldn't count on it, I would certainly wouldn't bet on it, but whatever, we'll see. Now the next thing is Activision Blizzard is now going to be an independent company, so Vivendi is like the big media conglomerate that owns Activision Blizzard. And Vivendi are in a bit of trouble at the minute, quite a bit of trouble, so now they've said to Blizzard, okay Blizzard, um, Activision Blizzard, you're now buying yourself. And um, they are, let's see the numbers here, yes, they are purchasing 429 million shares from Vivendi for 5.8 billion. So essentially, 5.8 billion of Blizzard's um, assets, now this includes both cash and then some debt proceeds, will go to Vivendi. And then Blizzard will now be a independent company with Vivendi owning a 20, no not 20, a 12% share. Pretty much in terms of games, I don't really know if this actually means too much. The top, you know, structure Activision and Blizzard is still going to be the same. And a lot of people have been harking, oh, it's the end of, I don't know, some weird, like... <laughs> some people are just saying, OMG, Blizzard's free from Activision now and they don't understand what's actually happened. But anyway, I don't really think it's a massive piece of news for those of you who are not planning on investing in companies, which is probably the majority of us, because we kill dragons, we don't make sound life decisions. And with that, it's the end of the show. So, if you like this video, please hit that like button, it really helps. And the favourite one too, that's another button that I never really talk about. Um, and if you're a new person who just came here to watch me talk about this stuff, then hit that subscribe button because it would make you a lovely person. And with you being a lovely person, I'm going to sign the show off. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.